Hello, this is Mohsen, the portfolio manager of Fortune Group of Companies. Welcome to the first episode of The Real Reality Talk. Hello, this is Mohsen, the portfolio manager of Fortune Group of Companies. Welcome to the first episode of The Real Reality Talk. In each episode, we try to discuss the main issues and questions concerning the Turkish property market. We have Mr. Sami here, the CEO and the founder of Fortune Group of Companies. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, Mohsen. How are you? Fine, thanks. How is everything going on? Actually, there are many things going on in this market mm -hmm. right now. And actually, we have some questions from you guys. And we were hoping that you would give us a proper answer for that. Sure, go ahead. Ask me. Sure. So, first of all, let's talk about the first, I think, I, and I can say the most common discussed word, which is Google more than 200 in each day, which is coronavirus. And the normalization process which was done by the government around a month, one month ago, and will be continued to the next week. So what, will, what, were, what are the changes that we are expected to happen after this normalization process? Uh, Mohsen, first of all, uh, I'll say for congratulations to the Turkish <laughs> government and congratulations to the world that we are going through this pandemic situation. And I hope mm -hmm. that in the next couple of months, we can see the light and the end of the tunnel. The things will be going better. In terms of the Turkish government, in the, on the 21st of Ju uh, June this month, uh, the Turkish government, the ministry, the health ministry, they sit mm -hmm. together, they have the meeting. And from the 1st of July, the Turkey will be going through the last stage of the normalization. That means all of the curfews, all of the restrictions, they will be going to end on the f last uh, day of June. So from the That's 1st great. of the July, the things will be normalized. The people can go out. There will be no uh, weekend curfews, no daily curfews, and the life will be really good, I hope. Wow, it's great, you know, because normally many people are concerned mm -hmm. about, especially investors. Uh, for example, we have potential investors from foreign companies, countries like Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. They are waiting for things to become a more stable. So what your suggestion for them? Uh, dear, as these countries are in the uh, red list mm -hmm. that they have to uh, do the quarantine for 14 days, mm -hmm. but I believe by the end of this month, 29 or 30th of this month in ju uh, June, the government will again have the meeting and then they will decide either they should allow these people from these countries to come here without the quarantine or this will be continued. So, but it's still, it's too early to say uh, we should wait for one more week then we'll be able to know that what will be the next step regarding this quarantine policy. But at the moment, all the investors who wanted to come from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and all these countries, those who are in the red list, they have to do the quarantine for 14 days. Even if they are fully vaccinated? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Mohsen, it is good for us. It is good for the people who are living in Istanbul or who are living in Turkey. Because for the Turkish government, the safety of their citizens, mm -hmm. the safety of their residents are important rather than for the foreign investors. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Right. They took this decision a bit late, but uh, yet they took this decision. Because mm -hmm. if they would have took this decision maybe six, seven months back, the things would have been much better now. But inshallah, I hope in next one or two weeks, the issue of this quarantine will be resolved also. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, as reference to the last question, actually there's some new term that we can see it almost in all the YouTube especially these days. There are new YouTubers and influencers mm -hmm. coming to the market. I, I, I'm not going to call them uh, competitors mm -hmm. because they are not, but they are providing clients with various of information and services. So in your opinion, to what extent these services and information are reliable and what are the risks that the clients choose these influencers over real 
state companies will face in the future. Dear, yeah, it is obvious. And you know, I am fighting for all these things from last one year. Again mm. and again, I'm talking about these issues because this is the real issue at the moment. The people coming from outside, they have no idea. They have no idea about the market. They have no idea about the rules, policies, nothing. And they are telling that this is good, this is bad. This company is good, this company is bad. You know why? If someone will give an influencer or a YouTuber or an Instagrammer, maybe some couple of thousand dollars, they will say, okay, this company is good, but this company is bad. Yeah, you're right. Understood? Yeah. Because we are the corporates, we are the companies. We don't have any competition with these YouTubers. Mm. You're right. In the last one year, we have seen lots of YouTubers who came here. They did the marketing, good marketing, bad marketing, but they destroyed themselves. They hurt themselves. They harm themselves. And where they are now, we don't see those. Because if someone is coming today with 100k subscribers, Maybe tomorrow someone will come with 200k. Exactly. Then someone will come with 500k. Then someone will come with 1 million. Exactly. So you cannot stop them. Yeah. But what you can stop is your thinking capability. Like exactly. you should know whom you should trust and whom you should not trust. Like we are the companies, we are sitting here paying millions of lira tax every year. Yeah. We have the offices, we have... Uh, our employees, we have our expenses. We are attached with the Turkish government. We are attached with different ministries, different governments. Yeah. And what these influ so-called influencers, I'll yeah. say, they are just coming here telling everyone, buy this, don't buy this, yeah. go to this company, don't go to this company. Because they are just famous in their country. That's, That's it. That. They, That's don't, it. they are not expertise in no. anything. And actually they like just doing this in accordance with the profit. Where is more profit in it? Okay, they go that way. And that Mohsen, if you see our YouTube channel yeah. also, our channel is monetized, mm -hmm. but there are no ads on our channel because this is not our revenue of income. This is not our stream of income. Exactly. But for all these YouTubers, they will try to say, make, make something spice up, you know? Yeah. If something will spice up, that will give them more views, more followers, more subscribers. And this is they wanted to do. They wanted yeah. to just create some kind of drama, okay, yeah. or they wanted to take some kinds of sympathy sometimes. Just to take attention and more attention, followers. Attention, exactly. Yeah. So I think we should not talk to them uh, about all these people more. So yeah, I we agree, can go yeah. to the next question. Then. Yeah, actually all of this brings us to the last question, which is what's the, more, the most uh, differences between companies who are working legally as real estate companies in terms of fee reliability and authenticity with these influencers which are emerging in highly number in these markets nowadays. Okay. Tamam. So Mohsin, first that we have uh, clear in the last question also, all those investors who are coming here or do want to come here, they should understand few things first, like whom they can trust or whom they cannot trust. First of all, they should see a company should have a face of the company. Mm -hmm. Understood? Yeah. Like we have the face of the company. We are working from last several years. We have a testimonials of clients. And thus we have a registered company. We have the merit. Yeah. See, we have the merit. And what does this bring? We, we are working with the legal platform of the Turkish government. Rules and regulation provided by the Turkish government. We have this beautiful, amazing office. Yeah. One of the beautiful offices in Istanbul we have. And with the beautiful view. Yeah. Plus, we are taxpayers. We are paying the tax. We have all the legal obligations, as I have informed you before. We are fulfilling all those things. Everything is clear. I mean, there are many agencies. They just uh, uh, rent an office with just maybe one or two thousand lira each month with two tables. Okay, and they call themselves agencies. But in terms of taxes, fee, government relation, okay. They are not competitive. Nothing. Yeah. And if we see on our YouTube channel also, we have a couple of hundred videos now. Yeah. It's not like we have started from last month or last year. At the moment, we have around three to four hundred videos. Yeah. And if we see our channel, it is one of the most authentic pioneer channels in terms of the authentic information and the knowledge. Yeah. And if we see us, Alhamdulillah, I'll say, and I feel proud in this that we are one of the biggest and the most emerging companies in Istanbul, Turkey. 
in terms of advertisement in terms of property selling in terms of online selling yeah. people are trusting us more and more because of our professionalism yeah exactly we have amazing office we have an amazing professional team like people ask me sir is your company a pakistani company you guys only speak urdu or hindi so no we have more than 10 different languages people are speaking in our language like yourself yeah you are from iran right yeah i'm from iran we have people who are from saudi arabia we have people who are from france from russia from all these countries we have more than 10 different languages spoken in our office mm. that means we can manage all those uh, countries who can speak all these languages yeah actually it's quite uh, unique especially in istanbul because as you all know yeah turkish people are great people but in this field in this expertise okay we need people who are more familiar with our client's culture and they can have better bond with them so it's important in my opinion to have people working in one office with different culture so they have better understanding of the client's culture and they can have better bond with them no exactly and this was my vision also to have a multicultural office where you can find the people from different nationalities different cultures working in the same roof and yeah. providing the uh, correct true ethical and professional services to the people all around the world yeah that's quite great really sir and for today thank you for watching our video inshallah in the next video we'll be discussing the more question coming from you guys and if you want any more information or you want to be in contact with us we can have our whatsapp facebook instagram and youtube channel